We've looked at a number of performance metrics, ways to measure communication systems. We've mentioned delay and the last thing we got to in the previous lecture, we, we did some calculations of, okay, if I have so many bytes to transmit, transmitting at some rate, it takes some time to transmit those bytes. What we would call the transmission delay or transmission time. But also, the signal that represents those bits, think of a sine wave, some electrical signal or radio signal needs to propagate across some medium, through the air, across some cable. That takes time too, the propagation time. So let's look at the, the different components that contribute to delay and then give some examples. Or can we go straight to an example? Uh, let's go straight to an example. Let's say we need to change lecture room. We need to move from this room. It's too hot in here, so we're going to move down to a lecture room downstairs. How long will it take us to move? We all want to be faster than one hour. We need to continue our lecture. How long is it, do you think it would take? Or how do you calculate how long it would take this class of students to move? 10 minutes. Let's calculate how long it would take. And we need to make a few estimates. What I want to show is that, okay, the delay, the delay of many systems, we use the same concepts, whether it's a real system or a communication system, the delay to, to, to do something depends upon a diff different factors. Let's make some simple assumptions. You don't need to copy this down. This is just a, a, a light example to get us started. Let's say, how many people here? Our class should be 45, but maybe not everyone comes. Maybe we've got 40 students. And my aim is to move this class of 40 students down to a lecture room downstairs. Where are we? On the sixth floor to down to the fifth floor. Okay. So, let's say I want to do it in an ordered manner. I don't want everyone to, let's say, we need to do it quickly. I don't want everyone just to run to the door and go to the other lecture room. I want to do one by one, one person at a time, and walk in a nice ordered line down to the room downstairs. There are different factors in play. The first thing I'm going to do is I want to make sure everyone leaves and I want to record your name as you leave so I can keep track of you. So we'll line you up in a line. Maybe at the door, line in a single file line. And let's say that takes some time to put you in a line before you leave this room. And let's say to, to line up takes some time, 30 seconds say. I know you're fast and want to leave. Let's, I'm just make up some numbers here. You'll see the significance later. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand at the door and let you out one by one. So we've got 40 people to get out of this room and I'm going to control the speed at which you go out of, the, out of that door. How many people can go out of the door? At what speed, do you think? If you just walk slowly out of this door, how fast can we get people out? Not if you all jam through, but just one by one through the door. One, for one person, how long? One second, okay. Let's say we can do one student per second. Out the door. One student per second. So imagine we're in a, you're in a big long line, we've lined up, it took 30 seconds to line up, and then I say go, and the first person goes out. One second later, the second person goes out, and the third person, and so on. Now, the, when the first person walks out of the door, they need to walk down the corridor, down the stairs, into the other room. Okay? And how far away is one of the lecture rooms downstairs? Let's say, I don't know, some distance between this room and the next room of... Anyone guess? Uh, 40 meters? 
Okay, let's say it takes, it's 40 meters from the door here, down the corridor, downstairs, to the next room. How long does it take, if you're the first person in the line, how long does it take you to get there? How long will it take you to walk 40 meters? What does it depend upon? 40 seconds? Why? Okay, well, one step, one second. Good. For example, I don't know how fast people walk, about one meter per second. One step, one second. Depends how fast you're going, doesn't it? But we want to do it in an orderly manner. So let's say you're going at one meter per second. Your walking speed. Speed of walking. One meter per second. So the question is, how long does it take to get this class into the other room? What's the answer? Try and calculate from this information. So the first step is it takes 30 seconds to line everyone up at the door. Once we're in a line, then one person at a time steps out of the door. And I control the speed at one student every second goes out the door. Once you step out the door, you walk at one meter per second down to the other room. How long does it take you to get to the other room once you step out the door? You step out the door, it takes you 40 seconds, okay, to, to, to what? To propagate down the corridor, down the stairs, and into the other room. So let's call that the different parts here. The time for one person, one student, to walk there, 40 meters at one meter per second equals 40 seconds. We'll call this the propagation time. Propagation. The time to travel but the time for one person to travel. How long does it take me to get the class out of this door? How long does it take me to get... Once you're in a line, it takes me 30 seconds to get you in this line, and then once you're in the line, how long does it take me to get you out the door? Anyone? How many students do we have here? Maybe not quite 40. How long to get out the door? Not hard. 40 students, one student per second, 40 seconds. Okay. Plus the first 30 to line up those students. So let's say you're all seated now. It takes 30 seconds to form a line. Then we start going out the door, one at a time. So another 40 seconds to get everyone out. So the question is, if I start lining you up now, how long until you're all in the other room? 30 seconds to line up. Then you start going out the door. As the first person goes out the door, they start walking, and one second later, the next person goes out the door. How long until everyone's in the second room? Again? One hundred and ten. How did you get that? Yeah, you're, you're right. So that, the answer was 110, I think. And 
And I think it's the correct answer. Let's see how that we arrive at that. First, the first step, line everyone up, takes 30 seconds. Okay? Once we're all in a line, then we start going out. The time it takes to get everyone out, 40 students at one student per second is another 40 seconds. So after 30 seconds, we're lined up, and then after another 40 seconds, everyone is out the door. So 70 seconds so far. The question is, when does the last person get to the next room? Well, if the last person leaves after 70 seconds, it takes that last person 40 seconds to walk down to the other room. So the total will be 110 seconds. The time to line up, 30 seconds. The time to get everyone out the door, 40 students at one student per second, 40 seconds. Plus, we want to know when does everyone get there? Well, the first person will arrive uh, when? When does the first person arrive? If the first person leaves after 30 seconds, it takes 40 seconds to get there. The first person arrives at time 70. But we care about when does the last person get there? 30 seconds to line up. 40 seconds to get everyone out. And another 40 seconds to get that last person down the corridor, down the stairs, into the other room. 30 plus 40 plus 40, 110 seconds in total. We will use these same concepts when we look at delay in a network. Let's just note that the time for one person to walk, to propagate down the corridor, is 40 seconds. The time to transmit, let's say I'm transmitting you out the door. Strange word. We had 40 students. It was a bad example. Same numbers. 40 students at one student per second. I should have used a different number. Another 40 seconds. That's what we'll call the transmission time when we come to computer networks. And then the first thing, we'll come back to that, the time to line up, let's, we'll call that the processing time. The time to get things ready. We've got our students here, we need 30 seconds to line them up, to process them, get them in the right order. Then, then it takes 40 seconds to transmit all of them out the door. And it takes 40 seconds for that last person to propagate from this door to the other door, the destination. Same will apply in computer networks. Instead of dealing with students, we deal with bits. And we talk about the rate at which we transmit bits out of a computer, a transmission rate or data rate. We talk about how many bits we have to transmit instead of how many students, how many bits in our data. And instead of talking about the speed at which we walk, we talk about the speed at which our signal propagates and we can calculate propagation delay, the time for the signal to propagate along the link, transmission delay, the time to get our bits out of the computer, instead of out of a room, out of a computing device, and processing delay, this time to line up, is the time it takes your computer to get the data ready. So the example here, the data was the students. Of course, in our computer, the data is a sequence of bits. Sometimes that may help people understand what we cover now, delay. But if this makes no sense to you, well, maybe it's not the best of examples. But I hope it helps some people understanding delay. Any questions about that? Make some assumptions, of course, about the speed, the distance, and so on. But if we know that data, we could calculate. So let's try and formalise that. Let's try to cover that concept with respect to computer communications. Delay is the time it takes to get from one point to another.
Delay is additive. The total delay is this summation of the components, the delay of each step. We saw that in our example, it was the time to process, the line up, plus the time to transmit, plus the time to propagate. And we talk about four components of delay. Transmission, the time to transmit the data onto a link. Propagation, the time for a signal or a part of the, the signal, called their signal element formally, to, to propagate across the link. Processing delay, the time it takes for the devices to process data, maybe the sending device, the receiving device and other devices. And one we didn't see in that example, but we'll see shortly, is queuing delay. Sometimes, especially in intermediate devices, our data arrives, it doesn't get to be sent onwards immediately, it may have to wait for other data before it gets its turn to, tr to be sent. So it may have to queue up and wait before it can be sent. That happens in some cases. So four parts of delay, let's look at them. Let's say we have a link between two computers, source and destination, and we have users of those computers. So what we're showing here is the user uses some application, some piece of software on their computer, which talks to the operating system inside that computer which then, so the user generates data, the application processes it, sends it through the operating system, the OS sends it to the network interface card, the, the LAN card, for example, the piece of hardware that then transmits that onto the link as some signal. The signal propagates across the link, is received by the corresponding network interface card, processed by the receiving or destination operating system, processed by the destination application and then the destination user gets the data. That's the flow of data here. With respect to delay, we can show three of those four components like this. Think of from when the user creates the data and let's say presses send until when it gets to the network interface card ready to be sent is the processing delay. So that's the time it takes the application to, to do some operations on the data, the operating system to pass that data through some memory structures for the protocols to, to operate. So it depends upon the speed of your computer, the application, the protocols being used, the operating system, uh, and what else is running on that computer. So the processing delay is the delay inside the device. Once it's got ready to be sent, the network interface card, the LAN card for example, transmits the bits onto the link. So with respect to where that happens, think of it at this point, going from the computer onto the link. So we have a sequence of bits, maybe a thousand bits to send. The network interface card, I didn't bring one today, converts those bits into a signal and transmits a signal out onto that link. So there's the transmission delay here. How long does it take? What does it depend upon? Transmission delay. How do we calculate it? Calculate transmission delay. What's the general approach? Data size and the answer is somewhere in your lecture notes, divided by the data rate. If I've got a thousand bits and my device can send at a hundred bits per second, data size a thousand divided by data rate 100 will give us 10 seconds. So simply the data rate of the device, usually a, a characteristic of the device, and how much data we have to send. That tells us the transmission delay. We send the first bit out. It starts propagating as a signal across the link. And subsequent bits follow it. And then the last bit comes out. The propagation delay, of, think of each bit propagating across that link, depends upon the length of the li link in meters and the speed of the signal. Like if it's a light signal, the speed of light. If it's an electrical signal, it's maybe around 2, 2 point something 
by 10 to the 8 metres per second. It depends upon the conducting material. The signal propagates very fast across the link. It's received by the computer and processed similar to at the source computer the NIC, the network interface card, operating system and application must do some processing. That takes time. So the delay from human to human, one way, is the summation of those components. The processing in the source device, plus the transmission onto the link, plus the propagation across the link, plus the processing. So if we can find the components, we can find the total delay. Let's extend that and then we'll go through some examples. If we just have a link, we've had that case, this is the case where we have two links. Or a general network where we send from one source device to some intermediate device which then sends it on to the destination. And you could generalize or extend this to have multiple links, more than two. Source to intermediate to intermediate to intermediate to destination. Similar concepts would apply. The difference, so the source, the user creates the data, application processes, sends through, it's going to send across the first link. This intermediate device will receive, do some processing, and I've tried to draw a queue here where the data has to maybe wait in the queue. Why would it do that? In some cases, this intermediate device may receive the data from the source, although it's not shown here, it also may receive data from other devices. Think of our wireless access point up here. It receives data from my laptop, plus from other people's mobile phones and laptops. So it's receiving data from multiple sources. It cannot send them all at once. So it sends the data from one of them first before the others. Therefore, the others must wait in a queue before they are sent. That's the concept here. The intermediate system, sometimes the data must be queued up, store in a queue before it's sent out again. In the, in the best case, it doesn't have to wait in the queue. It goes straight through. But sometimes if this device is busy, the data will have to wait. Then it's sent on to the destination. So we have similar concepts. Processing at the source computer, then transmit the data onto the link. Signal propagates across that link, arrives at the intermediate system. There's some processing at it as it arrives. And then the data is put inside a queue, waiting to be sent across the next link. So there may be some queuing delay there, what we call queuing delay, the time the data spends in the queue waiting to be sent. Same as if you go down for lunchtime, you've got to line up for the queue for, to order food. What's that depend upon? It depends on how many people are arriving and how fast the, the shop can serve you. So the more people arriving and the slower they are at serving, the longer the queue is. This is the same concept. As more data comes in, and the slower that we can send out, our queue length will increase, and as a result, the time our data spends waiting in the queue, the time you spend waiting to get food, will increase, the queue delay. Once it's your turn to be sent, the data's turn to be sent, it's processed briefly, transmitted across the second link, propagates, processed at the receiver. So when we have intermediate systems, we may also have queuing delay. With just a link, usually there's no queuing delay. Queuing delay usually occurs just in intermediate systems. In theory it could, but it's, it's very unlikely. We will not consider cases that it does. So, a simple way to remember these four components is that processing and queuing delay happens inside the devices. Processing is inside these computing devices. Most cases, queuing delay is only inside intermediate devices. In, the, in this course, that's all we're, we'll assume. 
whereas transmission and propagation delay depend upon the link characteristics. Link distance, data rate of the link, or at least the device connected to the link. So a simpler way to view those components is we have processing delay inside devices. We may have queuing delay inside intermediate devices, ones we send via to get to the destination. And if we look at each link, we can calculate or determine some transmission delay and propagation delay. So processing and queuing for devices, transmission and propagation for links. If there's a large network, then you just break it into components. For each link, think about the transmission and propagation delay. And for each device, think about the processing and queuing delay. And add them up to get the total delay. That's where we say delay is additive. The time to get from the first user to the, last, to the second user is the summation of all those component delays. We'll get to an example in a moment. Of those four components, transmission, propagation, processing, queuing, at least in this course, we'll only attempt to calculate transmission and propagation delay. Transmission delay is the number of bits to be sent, B in this equation, divided by the data rate. How much data we need to send divided by the speed at which we can send the data. The link data rate is usually a characteristic of the device attached to that link. My Wi-Fi device has a link data rate of 54 megabits per second. My LAN card has a link data rate of 100 megabits per second. My ADSL link at home maybe 24 megabits per second. Depends upon the device attached to the link. The number of bits depends upon what information we're transferring. So we can calculate that if we know those two values. Propagation delay depends upon the physical characteristics of that link. Distance and the speed at which the signal propagates in meters per second. Distance divided by speed. And unless we say otherwise, let's assume that the speed is the speed of light. C means the speed of light. Yeah approximately, and for, for our course, 3 by 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. 300 million meters per second is what we'll use for the speed of light. I will not ask you to remember the speeds of different materials. Okay, that's not what we'll cover. But sometimes I may give you in an exam or quiz, let's assume the speed of this copper conductor is some value then you would not use the speed of light, you would be gi use the given value. So those two we can calculate if we know that information. The other two we will not attempt to calculate. Processing delay depends upon many factors. The amount of data to process, how many bits, the software that's, that's running, and how that's actually implemented, the computer hardware, and what other things are happening on the computer. If I'm doing nothing on my computer, the processing delay may be smaller than when I'm running some background or applications in the background. It depends upon what my computer's doing. We don't have a way to calculate that with any accuracy in this course. Often, not always, but often it will be quite small compared to the transmission and propagation delay. Computers are fast, they can process a, a, a amount of data in a small amount of time, I don't know, nanoseconds, microseconds. In some of the examples we'll con consider, most times transmission and propagation delay is much smaller. So sometimes we'll assume the processing delay is zero. Even though there is a processing delay, it's quite small, that's for Let's make it zero, just to keep things simple. So again, unless I tell you in a question the processing delay of this computer is five milliseconds, if I don't tell you, assume it's zero. Q 
queuing delay. Intermediate device, data arrives. Data is arriving from many people, many different links, possibly. It can only be sent one at a time. So the first one, let's say three pieces of data arrive at the same time. Only one can be sent across the next link. So the other two have to wait in the queue. So they have some queuing delay incurred. How long is the queuing delay? Depends upon how much data is arriving and how much needs to be sent out, leave the device. And it also depends upon the queuing scheme. Maybe we give priority to Steve's data, give low prior high priority to my data, low priority to your student's data. In which case calculating the delay would be uh, more complex. There's whole courses on queuing and queuing systems. We will not cover how to calculate queuing delay. It can be large. In the internet, when we send data, I think last week I sent data between my computer and the web server in Japan, traveling via other intermediate systems, the delay for queuing can be quite large, larger than the other components. But again, unless I say otherwise, let's assume it's zero. So I may say in a question, queuing delay is one second. If I don't say, assume it's zero. So given that, calculate some, uh, let's go through some examples. But before we do, any questions on the concepts? Remember the four components of delay. And remember how to calculate two of them. Transmission and propagation. <coughs> Let's try some simple examples. Where can we start? Let's say we have uh, computer A connected via a link to computer B. So we have a, just a simple, net, a simple communication system with one link and the characteristics, uh, the link, 10 kilometers between two towns or two locations across the city. And let's make it a little bit different. The speed of transmission in practice is slower than the speed of light. So it depends upon the conducting material. Let's say it's this. The speed of signal transmission. Don't confuse this with the speed of data transmission. It's not the data rate, it's the speed at which a, a signal can propagate. It's 2.8 by 10 to the 8 meters per second. And let's say our link data rate, simple 1 megabit per second. I have 100 bytes of data to send. 100 bytes of data. Calculate the time it takes to get from A to B. Okay, so spend a few minutes calculating how long does it take to get my 100 byte message from A to B. Spend five or so minutes calculating how to do that. Our components. Remember, delay. Four components. Transmission. Bits. Data size divided by data rate. 
In our question, data size, 100 bytes. Data rate is 100 meg, uh, 1 megabit per second. So we know that we can calculate transmission delay. Propagation delay, the time for the signal to propagate, depends upon the distance of the link, 10 kilometers, and the speed of signal transmission, 2.8 by, by 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. So we can calculate that those two components. Processing delay in computer A and processing delay in computer B, I didn't tell you what they were. So let's assume they are zero. And queuing delay, well there are no intermediate devices, let's assume that's zero as well. So those, those two are easy. We just calculate the transmission and propagation delay. So transmission Was it data size? Divided by data rate. We've got 100 bytes of data. And be careful with units. So we've got 100 bytes of data. Let's do it in the full manner. Divided by a data rate of 1 megabit per second. You can't divide bytes by bits, so let's put them in the same unit. That is, it would be 800 bits divided by 1 by 10 to the power of 6 mega bits per second. Okay, if we simplify that, convert bytes to bits times by 8, get 800 at the top, 1 mega, remember mega is 10 to the power of 6. Bits, we convert bytes to bits, divided by bits per second. What is the units going to be? Seconds. Do it here, you can check. B divided by B over S, this inverts, the Bs cancel out and you get S left over. Seconds. And then it's 800 divided by 1. 800. Divided by 10 to the power of 6 is 10 to the minus 6. So 800 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds. 10 to the minus 6 is micro. So you start to get practice and you can do those and recognize that's, well, 800 microseconds. Because divide by 10 to the power of 6, divide by mega and you'll get micro. If you divide by micro, you'll get mega. If you think about the quick calculations on the prefixes. Or it could have been 0 0.8 milliseconds. Okay. That's the transmission delay, propagation delay. Distance divided by the speed of transmission of our signal. And our distance of our link was 10 kilometers. And our speed we said was, I don't know why I said it that, but 2 by 2.8 by 10 to the 8 meters per second. I think I looked up some material, some actual material, and uh, I can't remember, optical fiber or something, and that was the, the rated speed. All right, you need your calculator for that one. I'll let you do it. What do you get? 35.7 something what? Microseconds, good. Okay. Use your calculator, fine. So 800 microseconds to propagate out of computer A, oh, sorry, to transmit out of computer A and 35.7 microseconds for the signal for each bit to propagate across that 10 kilometer link. Distance divided by speed. This is mu or u, micro. So the total time, you can think 
it takes 800 microseconds for the bits to get out and that last bit takes 35.7 microseconds to get to the other end of the link. So we say the time from when the first bit was transmitted until when the last bit arrives is the summation of these two. 835.7. So the total about 836 microseconds. Any questions on those two calculations? Transmission and propagation delay. Why don't we have to change the unit of the Ah, I skipped that step. Why don't we change the units here? Sorry, I skipped that. So yes, 10 kilometers. 10,000 meters, kilo times by 10 to the power of 3, 10,000 meters divided by 10 to the point 8, 2.8 by 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Note that K is not a unit. K is what we call a prefix. The unit is meters. K is the prefix saying multiply by 1,000. This is meters. The unit here is meters per second. Meters divided by meters per second leaves us seconds. So yes, I skipped the step here of expanding the prefix. It helps if you start to remember some of those prefixes and you'll, with practice, you'll start to recognize and recall, ah, divide by mega, we get micro. And it makes your life a little bit easier. I see some people calculating on the calculator and they're writing down 0.0000357. Dealing with such numbers is a little bit harder than dealing with whole numbers. 800 plus 35.7 is much easier than 0 0.0008 plus 0 0.0000357, whatever, okay? That's why I try and convert into nice, use nice prefixes at the start. Any other questions on this one? Everyone got this answer? Good. Most people are on track if they didn't. Another one. Different scenario. Uh, we have... We have a satellite system. We want to communicate from Bangkok to LA. And instead of sending via cables under the, the ocean, we're going to transmit from a, a, a ground station here in Bangkok, transmit up to a satellite in space, and then that satellite operates in a mode that it receives the signal, receives the data, and then transmits it again down to some receiving ground station in LA here. We want to, once I give you some information about this, we want to calculate how long to, to communicate between our two locations. This is what we'll call a geo, geo satellite, geo, a satellite in geosynchronous orbit, sometimes a geostationary satellite. What that means is it's, it's above Earth such that as the Earth rotates, the satellite's in an orbit rotating such that if you look up and see the satellite, as the Earth rotates, you always look up and see that same satellite. It appears above you all the time. So the Earth rotates and the satellite's in the orbit such that as the Earth rotates, the satellite is orbiting, so it's all ab always above you. 
That's an orbit uh, which is commonly used for communication satellites, for TV, for some internet services. The orbit is about 36,000 kilometers above Earth. So the distance from Bangkok to our satellite, we're going to send a wireless signal, is 36,000 kilometers. And the distance down is about the same. I will not write it. Same distance. All right. Because we're in different locations, it must be plus or minus a bit, but 36,000 kilometers, 36 million meters up and 36 million meters down. Let's say we have, and we'll keep the, the rate simple, a data rate of both links. Yeah, let's keep it signal, simple. One megabit per second. That's both links. We, in fact, have two links in this communication system. The uplink to the satellite and the downlink from the satellite to the receiving ground station. So we send our data up to the satellite. It may process the data and then sends it down to the uh, ground station in LA. Let's say that the satellite takes some processing delay. There's a processing delay on board the satellite of 4 milliseconds. It receives the data, processes for 4 milliseconds and then sends down to LA. Let's use the speed of light. It's a nicer number to, to use in this case. Not 2.8 but the speed of light for speed of transmission. Calculate the delay for 1,000 bytes of data from Bangkok to LA. Okay, so there's the scenario. We want to send 1,000 bytes. We'll send it up to the satellite. The satellite will process and then send it down to LA. How long does that take to get there? quickly calculate the, the delay. And the links are the same. Same distance up as down, same data rate up as down. I've just written it once. Anyone have the answer? Remember your four components of delay. Transmission, propagation, processing and queuing. We, we treat this system as a network with two links. So in general we have our ground station that's going to transmit to the satellite. The satellite will process and then transmit to the receiving ground station. So just break it into two links and you can calculate separately. In this question it's even nicer because the links are the same. So you calculate once and you've got the answer for both links. So let's do that. What have we got? Easy. Queuing delay, zero. No queuing delay. Processing. At the ground station, I didn't say anything, so zero at the ground station. When we receive a message at the satellite, once we've received that entire message, then we spend four milliseconds to process it. Whatever the CPU has to do with that message, maybe detect if there are any errors in it, it takes four milliseconds. And then it sends down. And then there's no processing at the receiving one, so we're going to, at the end, we'll add on four milliseconds of processing. Therefore, we need to know the transmission and propagation delays of each link. Let's do the uplink. From Bangkok up to the satellite. Transmission data size. 
1,000 bytes, data rate, 1 megabit per second. If you remember back our previous example, we had 100 bytes, correct? In the first example, we had 100 bytes at 1 megabit per second, and it took 8 microseconds. So 1,000 bytes is 10 times larger, it will take 10 times as much. It will take us 80 micro. Have I done that wrong? Uh, all right, let's calculate. I think my memory is, is not so good from the previous one. Let's calculate. 8,000 divided by 1 by 10 to the power of 6. 8,000 bits divided by 1 by 10 to the power of 6 bits per second. 8,000 microseconds or 8 milliseconds. 8,000 microseconds is 8 milliseconds. Propagation delay. Be careful here. It's 36,000 kilometers. 36 million meters. Divided by the speed of light, which is well, 300 million meters per second. Thirty six divided by three hundred. Zero point one two or one hundred and twenty milliseconds. Again, use your calculator for these. It's fine. To get from Bangkok up to the satellite, it takes us eight milliseconds to transmit, but the signal representing each bit takes one hundred and twenty milliseconds to propagate through space to the satellite. It's such a large distance that the propagation delay is quite significant compared to the other components. So, it gets up there. Let's record. Uh, what do we have on our picture? Processing it here is zero. Transmission, we have, and I'll just do it, eight to transmit, 120 to propagate, 4 to process. So that's 8 to transmit up, 100, another 120 for the propagation. So it arrives at time 128 and then 4 milliseconds to process. So we add that on. And then we need to transmit it down. And as you realize, the transmission delay down is the same as up. Same data size, same data rate. So the transmission delay on the downlink is also 8. 8 milliseconds. And the propagation delay, it's the same distance at the speed of light, is another 120. Just add them up. 8 plus 120 plus 4 plus 8 plus 120, 260. Don't forget the processing delay in there. Any questions on that one? This was an example of a network with two links. It was a simple case where the, both links had the same characteristics, so we only calculated for once, for one link, and then it applied to the second. But in general, the links may be different, different data rates, different distances. So you'd need to calculate separately. But this one's a little bit easier. Any questions on delay? What about satellite communications? What's the problem with internet access via satellite? 
you subscribe one of the popular ones in Asia. It's called IP Star. It's, it's the TICOM satellite. The Thai satellite provides a service called IP Star for satellite internet through Asia and the Pacific. What's the problem with using satellite for, say, web browsing and general internet access that we see here? These are some realistic numbers, or some, some of them are at least. What's the problem? The problem is the delay, especially the propagation delay. Imagine you're web browsing. Your computer, maybe at your home, sends Here's at your home in Bangkok, you've got a satellite dish, you send up to the satellite, the satellite sends down to some gateway and then on to the rest of the internet. There's always this propagation delay of 120 milliseconds up, 120 milliseconds down. So when you're web browsing, compared to your normal access, there's always this additional 240 milliseconds to send your data from your computer to the server plus when the server sends back the web page an additional 240 milliseconds which is what 240 plus 240 is about half a second so when you're web browsing via satellite there's at least a half a second delay between you and the server plus all the other delays of the internet transmission and so on which means generally with web browsing via satellite internet it can be quite annoying in terms of responsiveness because there's always this large delay compared to what we're used to so the delay is quite a significant factor here how do we reduce the propagation delay how do we reduce the propagation delay it's 120 here how can we make it smaller change the speed of light? Uh, no, you see? Propagation delay, distance divided by the speed of light. We, have, we can't change the speed of light and the distance for the satellite is in such, it's, it's such that the orbit is so that the satellite rotates at the same speed as the Earth. So that we always have coverage of that satellite. That's why we have such a distance. If we had it lower, maybe a thousand kilometers above Earth, the satellite will be spinning much faster than the Earth does and it'll be there for 10-15 minutes and then we wouldn't have satellite coverage. So that's the problem with lower orbits. So we cannot reduce that propagation delay in practice. We can transmit faster but still it makes little impact compared to the propagation delay. Let's return to our slides. We've almost got to the end of this topic to summarize on delay. Four components. Remember them. Remember how to calculate transmission and propagation. And also how to apply them in links and in networks. We've had a couple of examples. Two minutes. We'll cover this in two minutes. What do we need for good performance? When you're web browsing, how much delay can we tolerate? That's what this is about. The response time, what's a good response time? Have a look at these. We will not go through much. We may see examples as we go through. Web browsing, some people say that anything over 100 milli milliseconds users start to notice a response time of a second you press the button takes a second to get back you'll notice you have to wait a little bit so we want that to be as small as possible there was estimates that Amazon which of course sells a lot of things via their website extra response time means people don't buy as much so it costs money Voice calls we may return to when we look at audio. Last one. If you've ever tried to stream video, depending upon the resolution of the video, what throughput do we need to get good quality? 
Well, here's some approximate numbers. Maybe low quality YouTube, about one megabit per second. You want to stream normal TV, standard definition digital TV, about five megabits per second. High definition, about 11 megabits per second. It dif differs in different cases. So these are some requirements of performance of applications. So what we need to do is look at how to design communication networks to meet these requirements. So we're not going to say much else about these. Have a look, think about the applications you use and think about what gives good performance when you're web browsing, what is a measure of good performance and what's a measure of bad performance for the different applications you use. Tomorrow we'll move on to signals and start to look at signals. <coughs>